Well, hello everybody. I hope you all had a good week. In the comments last week, it was suggested that it might be a good idea to take down the working voltages of this Dell Vostro 3568 now that we have it working. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to follow along with the schematic and I'm going to show you the voltages that you should expect to find on one of these motherboards if it is working. I have my screen split in two here. So on the left is the schematic. On the right is the motherboard. So all of these measurements I'm going to show were taken with the power adapter plugged in but the laptop powered off. So essentially in standby mode. So let's start with our DC jack and we'll take some voltages there. Now as we discovered last week there are six pins on this DC input jack and then two outer pins which are connected to ground. I marked those in here and what we discovered was that the adapter voltage comes in on pins one and two. So the first check we should carry out is to see that our adapter voltage is coming in on pins one and two. So with my black probe to ground my multimeter in volts DC in the 20 volt range I place my red probe to either pin one or two and I find that it measures 19.5 volts. So we are getting the proper adapter voltage coming through our DC input jack and onto the motherboard. So following along on our schematic, if we follow the path that pins 1 and 2 take, you can see that this comes across here onto PQ4301. This is the MOSFET right here. And on our actual motherboard, that path is from pins 1 and 2 here along this track and onto this MOSFET PU4301. We can see from the schematic that DC in comes on to pins 1, 2 and 3 of PU4301 and these are the three source pins. I'm going to mark in the different pins on this MOSFET just to make it clear. It's a little bit small but you can three, see three source pins there. So we've got 1, 2 and 3. So if I measure here we should have our 19.5 volts on this. So placing my red probe to the source pin, place my black probe to ground, I'm on my multimeter, I measure 19.5 volts. Now PU4301 is a P-channel MOSFET, so our gate voltage should be low in order to allow our 19.5 volts from our source to our drain pins. So let's just confirm what the voltage is on that gate pin. With my black probe on ground, my multimeter in DC volts in the 20 volt range, I place my red probe to the gate pin of PU4301 and I find that it measures 3 volts. With 3 volts on the gate pin, that's a low signal, so that should switch our P-channel MOSFET on, and I should be detecting 19.5 volts at all of our drain pins. So again, with my black probe on ground, I place my red probe to the drain pin of PU4301, and I measure 19.5 volts. So we're measuring 19.5 volts on pins 5, 6, 7, and 8 of PU4301. So where does it go next? Well next, as you can see, it is labelled AD+, and we need to find that further down the schematic. And further down the schematic, I have found AD+, and as you can see, our 19.5 volts leaving PU4301 comes down onto the four drain pins of PQ4410, and I can mark that path out here, because that path is right along this track here, and onto this MOSFET PQ4410. And just to confirm, we have our 19.5 volts coming through here onto the drain pins of PQ4410. I place my black probe to ground and my red probe to the drain pins of PQ4410. And I measure 19.5 volts there. Now PQ4410 is also a P-channel MOSFET. So we should expect a low signal on the gate pin of PQ4410 in order for this to be switched on and to allow our 19.5 volts through from our drain to our source pins. If we look at that MOSFET on the board right here, I can mark out the pins on that. So as we've already said, these four are our drain pins right here and this pin here is our gate pin. So we want to measure the voltage on this and see what we're getting. With my multimeter in volts DC once again, I place my black probe to ground and I place my red probe to the gate pin of that second MOSFET and I measure 1.75 volts on the gate pin. Our gate voltage is measuring 1.75 volts so that should mean that PQ4410 is switched on and I should be getting 19.5 volts at the source pins of that MOSFET. So let's just confirm that. I place my red probe to one of the source pins and I find that it measures 19.5 volts. So that second MOSFET is also switched on and permitting our 19.5 volts through from our drain pins to our source pins. 
Just back to our schematic, we have shown that we're measuring 19.5 volts on pins 1, 2, and 3 of PQ4410. So where does it go next? Well, next it goes through our current sense resistor, which is PR4426, and this is our main power rail right here. So PR4426, and we should be measuring 19.5 volts here. So let's just confirm that. We place a black probe to ground once again, my red probe, to this side of the current sense resistor, and we're measuring 19.5 volts. So that is what the voltages should look like on a working input section for one of these laptops. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flash up a quick graphic of all of those voltages that I've measured. This is my graphic of the input voltages that I've measured. I think it might be a good idea actually to put together a high definition image of the motherboard with all of the voltages that you should expect on a working motherboard. That's the sort of concept that I've been working on. It might be a good idea that if I get a motherboard working, I just take this image, mark in all of the working voltages on it and make it available to download. But here's what we're seeing anyway. On pins 1 and 2, the whole track down to the source pins, 19.5 volts here. On the gate pin of the first MOSFET, I'm measuring 3.0 volts. After the first MOSFET on the drain pins and the whole way along this track onto the drain pins of the second one, I'm measuring 19.5 volts. On the gate pin of the second MOSFET, PQ4410, I'm measuring 1.75 volts. And then after this MOSFET, I'm measuring 19.5 volts on the main power rail. So having confirmed that our 19.5 volts is good, what other voltages can we check on on this motherboard? Well, as we know on all of these motherboards, once your main power rail is in place, the next thing usually that people would check on is to make sure that our always-on voltages are present. On this motherboard, there's a TPS51225 that generates a VREG3 and a VREG5. These are sometimes called VREG3 or LDO3 or VREG5 or LDO5. These are our always-on voltages. So the next thing I'm going to show you is on this motherboard, how we check to see that these voltages are online. Now continuing from where we left off on our motherboard, you can see that our 19.5 volts is here. So if we draw the path down to the TPS51225, it's actually on the same side of the board, and we follow this path down here, you will see that our 19.5 volts comes down and onto pin 12 of our TPS51225. Now what I've done is I've superimposed all of the pins of that IC onto the drawing. So as you can see, our 19.5 volts is our VIN. It provides an input voltage for our TPS51225. And if we want to confirm that TPS51225 is getting the correct input voltage, we can take a voltage measurement at VIN. So placing my black probe to ground, I'm just going to get ground from the other side of one of the capacitors and I place my red probe to V in. Now these pins are tiny so unless you have a really small probe it's dangerous to take a measurement here so it's actually easier to measure on the capacitor that's connected to V in. So when I take a measurement at that capacitor I measure 19.5 volts. So I'm getting the correct input voltage. So we've confirmed that the TPS51225 has the correct input voltage but What's this IC going to do for us? Well, as we saw in the schematic, it generates a 3.3 .3 volts always on and a 5 volts always on. And those pins are right here. So we have VREG5, which is our always on 5 volts, and our VREG3, which is our always on 3.3 .3 volts. And to confirm that our 3.3 .3 volts always on power is working, I take a measurement right here. Now, it's actually easier to measure at this point. So in volts DC, 20 volt range, once again, I take a measurement right here, and I find that it measures 3.3 volts. So our TPS51225 is giving us our 3.3 volts always on power. And we can also confirm that our 5 volts always on power is also present. So this time I take a measurement at VREG5. Again, the easiest place to measure here is at this capacitor. So placing my red probe right here, I find that it measures 5.20 volts. So our 5 volts always on power is also present. So we've confirmed that our always on voltages are present. What do we need to check next? Well, next we need to check our startup IC. So this is the IC that accepts the power on signal from the power button and tells the laptop to switch on. So let's find that. 
and from our schematic I've located our startup IC or super IO or KVC or whatever you want to call it MEC 1404 you can see it's got 128 pins and the first check we would need to carry out on this when we're troubleshooting is just to verify that it has input voltage as you can see at the top here we have 3.3 volts underscore S5 underscore KBC comes on to these pins right here so we should be able to find an input voltage of 3.3 volts on pin 43 so that 82 103 5 19 and 65 so let's verify that and this is MEC 1404 as it looks on the motherboard itself obviously it's upside down here but we don't care about the orientation we're just interested in the pin numbers so let's mark in the pin numbers now we've already confirmed that our 3.3 volts, 3 .3 volts always on power is being generated by our TPS51225. The next thing I want to check is to make sure that this Super I.O. is getting the correct input voltage. As we saw on the schematic, there are a number of pins that it should be receiving 3.3 volts on. One of those is pin 65. It can be measured on any of the input pins, but pin 65 is down in the corner here so it's out on its own it's easier to take a measurement here so let's just mark it in that is one of the VTR pins so what I'm going to do next is just verify that we're getting 3.3 volts on that pin 65 so with my black probe placed to ground I've actually placed it on one of the USB ports I introduced my red probe and we're measuring in volts DC once again I place my red probe to pin 65 very carefully and I find that it measures 3.3 volts so that's how I confirm that my super IO is receiving the correct input voltage of 3.30 volts back to our schematic we have confirmed our VTR pins right here. We're reading 3.3 volts. That's the correct input voltage for this IC. So what do we need to check next? Well, next we need to check the power switch signal being sent to the Super I.O. And if you look at pin 127 here, let me zoom in on that. Pin 127 is power switch in. So there should be a voltage on this, and this voltage should drop to zero when the power button is pressed. And this is pin number 127 right here. So I have labeled this power underscore SW underscore in hash. So we need to take a voltage measurement at this pin. So as you can see, this is connected out here onto this capacitor. So this is the easiest place to measure it. So with my black probe connected to ground, I place my red probe to the capacitor and I measure 2.90 volts. Now 2.90 volts is what I'm measuring at pin 127 without pressing the power button. When I press the power button, that reading goes to 0 volts. And then when I release the power button again, it goes back up to 2.90 volts. That's how it works. And one last reading I want to take from this IC is the PCH underscore RSM reset signal, which is pin 88 on this particular IC. So placing my red probe very carefully to pin 88, I find that it reads 3.30 volts. Okay, and the last measurements I want to take are just the measurements on these large secondary inductors. So when the laptop is plugged in, but not yet powered on. This is what I'm measuring on all of these inductors here. So on PL5301, I'm measuring one volt here. On the three here, next to the processor, I'm measuring zero volts on all three of these. Down here, I am measuring on PL4501, I'm measuring 5.2 volts. On PL4502, I'm measuring 3.3 volts. And on PL5101, I'm measuring 0.0, .0 volts. There's one more inductor that is on the voltage rail that feeds the battery, but I don't have a battery for this, so there's no point in me putting them the voltage measurements for that. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to switch the laptop on and I'm going to take these measurements again and I'm going to show you what the voltage should be when the laptop is fully powered on. After pressing the power button these are the voltages I'm now measuring. So some of them are the same and some of the voltage rails as you can see only come online when the laptop is fully powered on. PL5301 is still reading one volt PL5001 and PL4701 are now measuring 1 volt, so this is for the processor. There is a third inductor here that is still measuring 0.0, .0 volts. Uh, back over to this side, PL4501 is still measuring 5.2 volts and PL4502 is still measuring 3.3 .3 volts. This inductor right here, PL5101, was measuring 0 volts and now with the laptop powered on is measuring 1.25 volts and this is for the memory. 
So that's all I got for this week, guys. That's basically what was left on the cutting room floor from last week's video. Uh, but look, it might be of use for, for somebody who has this laptop and is looking to compare the voltages on their broken laptop to what the voltages should look like on a working laptop. I'm still working on laptop number three out of four of those ones that I bought from eBay. I will hopefully have a result with that next week and I will post a video. Thanks for watching.